एक एक हो जाए पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ बहुत सारे महाज खोले कुछ हमने खुद खोले और काफी सारे हमारे खिलाफ खोले गए आज का महाज इमरान खान के नाम अस्सलाम वालेकुम बिस्म रहमान रहीम मैं हूं वजाहत सईद खान सॉरी एक दो दिन से इसलिए गायब था क्योंकि इधर न्यूयॉर्क में एशिया सोसाइटी के साथ साथ लाहौर लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल हो रहा था लाहौर लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल जो लाहौरी हैं और जो लाहौरी नहीं भी हैं जानते हैं दस साल से हो रहा है इस बार आ, मुझे एजाज मिला कि मैं लाहौर लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल जो न्यूयॉर्क में होता है काफी सालों से नहीं हुआ हुआ था मगर आ, अब होना शुरू हो गया कोविड की वजह से बंद हुआ हुआ था मगर फिर से शुरू हो गया पाकिस्तान की सकाफत वगैरह जो है उसमें मैंने थोड़ा सा अपना हिस्सा डाला मुझे एजाज मिला कि मैं पहला जो है पैनल उसे होस्ट करूं आ, मेरे दोस्त मुसनफ शहबाज तसीर साहब उनकी जो किताब है लॉस टू द वर्ल्ड वो हमने डिस्कस की आ, जो तस्वीरें तस्वीरें आप देख सकते हैं लिंक जो है डिस्क्रिप्शन में मगर वो खत्म हो गया आज इमरान खान पे आ, हम कॉन्सेंट्रेट करते हैं इमरान खान इज अंडर फायर अब ऑब्वियसली अगर आप मेरी तरह बाहर रहते हो आपको पता होगा मेरी आधी ऑडियंस पाकिस्तान में है आधी ऑडियंस बाहर है तो आज मैं आप दोनों से एक अपडेट देता हूं आप दोनों को कि पिछले कुछ महीनों में एक ट्रेंड चला है कि अगर पाकिस्तान में कोई खबर पाकिस्तान से कोई खबर आई है तो वो इमरान खान की आई है इमरान खान की और शायद जो आपकी जो इकोनॉमी का हाल हो गया है उसकी इंटरनेशनल पब्लिकेशन इंटरनेशनल मीडिया अगर किसी को कवर करते हैं तो उस बंदे का नाम इमरान खान इमरान खान पे अटैक हुआ कवर हुआ इमरान खान अरेस्ट हुआ कवर हुआ इमरान खान और पाकिस्तान अब सिनोनमस हो गए हैं इनफैक्ट एक टेस्ट करें अभी जाके आप ये वीडियो रोकें या ना रोकें रोकने की बात करिएगा देखने के बाद गूगल पे जाए और पाकिस्तान लिखें गूगल पे जाएं और पाकिस्तान लिखें और न्यूज का बटन दबाएं गूगल न्यूज की सर्च करें तो इमरान खान का सेक्शन ऑटोमेटिकली टॉप पे आ जाएगा अजीब सी बात है छह सात महीने पहले ये नहीं हो रहा था मगर ये होना शुरू हो गया क्योंकि इमरान खान पाकिस्तान बन गया है पाकिस्तान इमरान खान बन गया कम अज कम गूगल पे क्यों ये क्या बात है कि इमरान खान खाली पाकिस्तान में नहीं मगर ग्लोबली भी हेडलाइन डोमिनेट करता है um what's so special about uh, uh well in my opinion uh and i'm maybe wrong magar aaj main apni thesis ko test karunga aaj ke jo guest hain unki taraf ek minute mein chalta hu magar imran khan kyun pakistan ki sabse badi story uh itne mahino se balki shayad itne saalon se well it's because of his his own story his own struggle his own brand his own image his own sex appeal his own grit his own determination his own u turns his own policies um and frankly aajkal jo sabse importantly jo unka uh, uh, panga chala hai uh, faujiyon ke sath because wo shayad pakistan ki tareekh mein aap shayad pakistan ki tareekh mein uh, sabse bade uh, anti establishment figure anti establishment hero anti status quo figure ban chuke अब पाकिस्तान में तो व्यूज जो होते हैं वो बड़े पार्टिजान आप अगर दोनों साइड का मौकफ दें तो लोग कहते हैं आपको कि भाई आप आप प्लेइंग यू आर प्लेइंग बोथ साइड आपका सॉफ्टवेयर अपडेट हो गया पाकिस्तान में क्योंकि लोग वैसे भी अनफॉर्चुनेटली जर्नलिस्ट या लोग बढ़ गए हैं मस्जिदें बन गई हैं तो ये प्रो और एंटाई वाला जो कैंप है ये बड़ा स्टार्ट जियो देखें तो लगता है कि टिल्ट है ए आर वाई देखें लगता है किधर टिल्ट है डॉन पढ़े लगता है किधर टिल्ट है जंग पढ़े पता चल जाता है बच्चे को भी कि ये किस जाविये से खबर दे रहे हैं तो मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया को तो आप छोड़ ही दें अब मगर सोशल मीडिया पे भी अब यही शुरू हो गया है कि अगर आप फलाने हैं तो आपका ये आपका वो एडिटोरियल होगा बैलेंस कम होता शायद क्योंकि हम खुद पाकिस्तानी हैं खुद हमारी फैमिली जुदन है हमारा दिल हमारा जुनून ऑब्वियसली हमारी सरजमीन से निकलता है तो शायद हम खुद इन्वॉल्व हो जाते हैं मगर और इसलिए पार्टिजान हो जाते हैं आप एक पार्टी के हो जाते हैं दूसरी पार्टी के हो जाते हैं मगर अब मैं आज उन जुनूनी व्यूज में इंटरेस्टेड नहीं मैं एक बैलेंस्ड थर्ड पार्टी व्यू एक ऐसे व्यूअर से बात करना चाह रहा हूँ जो हमें बाहर से देखता है बड़े ठंडे कूल मिजाज से देखता है 
जिसका इस रेस में कोई घोड़ा नहीं है जिसने शक नहीं लगाई भी कि भाई मैं नवाज का बंदा हूं या मैं इमरान का बंदा हूं आज हम एक ऐसे बंदे से बात कर रहे हैं ये जो है बहुत मेरे स्पेशल गेस्ट हैं इनको मैं सालों से इनका काम पढ़ रहा हूं उसी यूनिवर्सिटी में जिसका पीछे आप देख सकते हैं झंडा कोलंबिया यूनिवर्सिटी स्कूल ऑफ जर्नलिज्म के ये ग्रेजुएट हैं और जो शायद सबसे इन्फ्लुएंशियल अखबार है अमेरिका का शायद इवन दुनिया का वॉल स्ट्रीट जर्नल उसमें साउथ एशिया को कवर करते हैं कभी मोदी साहब को धोते हैं कभी बांग्लादेश पे जबरदस्त कॉलम लिखते हैं मगर पिछले दिनों में कोई तीन बार चार बार इन्होंने इमरान खान पे अलग अलग कॉलम लिखी छह महीने पहले इनका इमरान खान पे एक और मौकफ था अब इनका इमरान खान पे एक और मौकफ था सपोर्ट भी करते हैं इमरान खान की स्टोरी को फॉलो करते हैं उसको इंटरेस्टेड है उसमें मगर क्रिटिसाइज भी करते हैं तो मैं आज इनसे बात करूंगा और ये भी आपके बारे आप आपसे भी एक सवाल चलते चलते इससे पहले के इंटरव्यू पे चले आपसे भी पूछता हूँ ये ये बाकी इमरान खान क्यों अफगानिस्तान के बारे में क्यों नहीं खबरें चलती टी टी पी और बलोच इंसर्जेंसी जो शुरू हो गया इनके बारे में क्यों नहीं उधर खबरें चलती बाजवा साहब ने जो पैसे खाए हैं जो उन पर इल्जाम उस पर क्यों नहीं स्टोरी चलती मलिक रियाज साहब जिन्होंने पूरे पाकिस्तान में हर एक को खरीदा हुआ है या परवेज लाई साहब जिनका गेट टूट गया है या आसिफ जदारी साहब जिन्हें अभी, अभी भी टेन परसेंट कहा जाता है या बिलावल भुट्टो साहब जिन्हें इंटर्न कहा जाता है या शबाज शरीफ साहब जिन्हें पाकिस्तान की तारीख का सबसे वीक प्राइम मिनिस्टर सबसे कम, कमजोर वजीर आजम कहा जाता है या बाबर आजम साहब जो आईसीसी के नंबर वन प्लेयर हैं या आसिफ मुनीर साहब जो uh, शायद चीफ uh, जिन्हें होना चाहिए था या नहीं होना चाहिए था जो भी है इनकी कहानियां क्यों नहीं चलती गूगल इनके बारे में क्यों नहीं आपको ऑप्शन देता जब आप पाकिस्तान लिखते वाई इज द वर्ल्ड ऑब्सेस विद इमरान खान एक तो ये आज का मुद्दा इस पर सोचें और अगर सोचने का शौक है तो आए मेरे साथ मेरे ब्लॉग के दूसरे हिस्से में वॉशिंगटन की तरफ और मेरे एक बहुत स्पेशल गेस्ट की तरफ सदानंद धूमे हैं तो ये गोवा दिल्ली के मगर रहते हैं वॉशिंगटन में और हम सबको पता है कि जो वाशिंगटन सोचता है जो वाशिंगटन पढ़ता है वो फिर पिंडी इस्लामाबाद में इंप्लीमेंट होता है तो इसलिए आज का ब्लॉग जो है थोड़ा सा वीकेंड वाइब मैं डालना चाह रहा हूँ बट एक लॉन्ग व्यू लेना चाह रहा हूँ क्योंकि सदानंद की जो एनालिसिस हैं वो खाली हम और आप जैसे आम लोग नहीं पढ़ते बट बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट बहुत बड़े लोग ये दुनिया का शायद सबसे इन्फ्लुंशल न्यूज पेपर है वो लोग पढ़ते हैं तो आज हम उनसे बहस करेंगे कि इमरान खान उन्हें छह महीने पहले पसंद क्यों था और अब वो थोड़े से इमरान खान के बारे में स्केप्टिकल क्यों हो रहे हैं और उनको क्या होप नजर आ रही है या आ भी रही है कि शायद ये आ जाए बच जाए कुछ कर जाए या ना तो ये है आज के महाज साथ रहिए और अगर आपकी अंग्रेजी जरा कमजोर है तो फिर आहिस्ता आहिस्ता जैसे मेरी है तो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता देखिए और कुछ सवाल हैं आ, तो वो भी साथ डालिए इसी के साथ ही आए वॉशिंगटन का रुख कर और राइट सो कम होता है कि आपको ऐसा राइटर मिले जो एक तो आपके मुल्क को आपकी तरह समझ सके मतलब कि जैसे आप एक देसी तरीके से समझते हैं मगर लिखे जिस जुबान में लिखे जिस तरीके से लिखे जिस स्टाइल से लिखे और जिस ऑडियंस के लिए लिखे वो एक बैन अवी ऑडियंस हो तो एक लोकल लेंस मगर एक ग्लोबल फ्लेयर और मैं बहुत खुश हूं कि बड़े अरसे बाद बड़े अरसे बाद ऐसे राइटर नहीं मिलता बट बड़े अरसे बाद मैं ढूंढ रहा था इन्हें ये पूरी दुनिया में मशहूर थे मगर स्पेशली मेरी मेरी जो रीडिंग लिस्ट है उस पर हमेशा टॉप पे थे फाइनली मिल गए हैं मुझे सदानंद धूम है हाय 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 वजात आदाब सुना है आप गोवा से हैं मेरी फैमिली गोवा से है मैं तो खुद दिल्ली से हूँ अच्छा आप गोवा से हैं दिल्ली से और आप वॉशिंगटन में हैं आप वॉल स्ट्रीट जर्नल के ऑब्वियसली मेरे फेवरेट मेरे फेवरेट आप साउथ एशियन वॉचर हैं बाय द वे बहुत शुक्रिया बट बट मैं मैंने एक बचपने में फिल्म देखी थी आपने भी देखी थी सबने देखी है वो इमरान खान ने भी देखी है क्योंकि वो उस फिल्म के जो डायरेक्टर है उसके जो हीरो है क्लेंट ईस्टवुड उसको ऑफन उसका एक और कैरेक्टर है डर्टी हैरी उसे साइड करते हैं जी डर्टी हैरी मशहूर है मगर इमरान खान जो साइट नहीं करते एक और फिल्म है द गुड द बैड एंड दगली 
वो भी डर्टी हारी वाली एक्टर ने उस फिल्म में एक्ट किया आज मैं उस फिल्म की थीम गुड बैड एंड अगली देख के आपके काम से आपको ट्रैक करूंगा आप इसलिए क्योंकि आपका छह सात महीने कॉलम पढ़ा तो लग रहा था कि आपको तो इमरान खान बहुत पसंद है आप कह रहे थे इमरान खान जैसा बंदा ही नहीं पैदा हुआ इमरान खान खूबसूरत है इमरान खान पार्टी करता था लंदन में इमरान खान इस्लामी है इस्लाम इमरान खान अवामी है राइट बट फिर छह सात महीने में क्या हुआ कि अब आपका जो लेटेस्ट कॉलम पढ़ा उसमें आपने कहा इमरान खान की कुछ मुझे समझ नहीं आ रही शायद इमरान खान पाकिस्तान को नहीं चला सकता तो ये क्या हुआ है छह सात महीने में धूमे साहब कि आपने अपना मौके बदला है नहीं मैंने वैसे नहीं बदला पर वजात मैं, मैं अंग्रेजी में बात करना चाहूंगा क्योंकि आपकी उर्दू बहुत अच्छी है पर मेरी उर्दू और हिंदुस्तानी इतनी अच्छी नहीं है भाई दिल्ली वालों तो... की उर्दू कराची वालों की उर्दू से मतलब से बेहतर ही होनी चाहिए बट उर्दू है फाइंड हिम अपीलिंग because i think that's important for you know my readers are mostly american writing for the wall street journal um it sort of they need to understand the phenomenon even if i don't in the end uh, agree with uh, some of his political or policy positions right so those are two things where i i'm 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 not i've not ever presented myself as someone who is supportive of his project but i think it's my duty to be fair to him when i explain the imran khan phenomenon and i think that people who are not willing to acknowledge for example that he is the most popular politician in pakistan uh, we have to acknowledge that you don't have you don't have to like the guy or not like the guy you have to acknowledge it you have to acknowledge that if you look around the world imran khan has one of the most powerful personal stories i can think of anywhere in the world right I mean you have this guy who at this very young age is representing his country at the highest level of sport. Sure. He he performs at the pinnacle of the sport for 20 odd years. He takes a team that has its back to the wall and famously takes it to his country's leading sort of the, the pinnacle of its sporting achievement. obviously none of this is new to your readers but you know for my readers this stuff is is, is they don't know this stuff right everyone sure. in pakistan knows this everyone in india knows this but people outside don't necessarily know this then he goes off and found, goes and found, and founds a really first rate cancer hospital you know in a in a place where it's not hard to do right this this part of the world is not easy for an individual to just say you know i'm going to set up a hospital and that to a, a, a first class hospital in memory of his mother So I think the sort of the um and then you know uh, recent allegations notwithstanding I think he has shown through the course of his career that this is not a guy who's in my mind motivated by money. Hmm. He may be motivated whatever else he may be motivated by he's not a guy who's in this to you know to to buy a a a, a palace in France or you know that that's that's not his game right. Um that's not what he's He's and he walked with it. He's yeah, and he's it. yeah, he and and he walked away from you know a life of great luxury. If he had wanted to lead a life of great luxury in the most elite social circles of the West, the, it was on a platter for him, right? But he walked away from all of that and chose to build his life in Pakistan. And I think that just all of that makes for a really you know powerful story. He has a he's a he has a natural appeal. and he has taken pti from as you know as you were saying and and many others have also he, you know he took pti from a one man show to the most powerful political party in the country by some distance and so you have to give the guy in my view credit for all of these things even if you have disagreements with him in terms of uh the direction that he wants right and you have to sort of you know so so that's my point i haven't changed my views on him but i just think that you you know we we need to acknowledge that this is a person with a very compelling story who brings a unique set of strengths to the poli- to, to to his political game right so till now to recap you think that brand imran 
as we know it, or Imran Khan's story as we know it, is is well uniquely appealing because of the the sheer multitude of stories within. It's one of the, the most dramatic stories you can tell, right? Right. How many, how many politicians think of, think about it, right? Think about his uh, Bolsonaro, or think of Trump, or Modi, Erdogan. I mean. You need a compelling story to make it in politics. And all of these people have compelling stories to one degree or the other. But I think Imran Khan's story would stack up in terms of just his short storytelling, right? If you were describing this to a Hollywood director, <laughs> I have a story for you. This is a really, um, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, it, it, the, the narrative arc is simply not common, right? Because how many people in any country or in any era get to occupy the pinnacle of international sport and the pinnacle of domestic politics. Mm. Those are two. For, so so th there aren't too many human beings or any human being I can think of who've actually managed to do both. But to that point, I'm with you. And I think so are millions of Pakistani voters and admirers globally. I mean, from the editor of Vanity Fair to the, the, the local Chaiwala in Karachi would all agree with you. Sure. But... Here's the thing. Off late, your work, now let's talk about political projections. Your work, your headlines, your, your leads have evolved to, um, I wouldn't say skepticism, but a bit of a, a, a cautionary undertone to what Khan is capable of. Uh, of course, uh, I'll let you qualify that, but that's my take. My take is that you are being um, a, a, a little skeptical about... Uh, Beyond the positive stuff, beyond Brand Imran, if he comes back, let's say, it's a big if right now, a major if, considering where things have gone his way off late, especially after the riots and the protests against the army. If he does come back, you are skeptical about whether he will be able to deliver. Why? So, again, this is not an evolution. I mean, I think these two things can exist side by side, right? That someone can be an extremely charismatic politician, a uh, very successful politician. So he can have the pulse of his uh, people and he can have many strengths, but that doesn't necessarily always translate into being the best administrator, for example. So my sort of, so, so the reasons for skepticism are a couple. I mean, I think the first is, this is something that, you know, I, I watch your vlog very regularly and, you know, you cover this on a, at a really sort of at a, at a, at a, at a, at a micro detail, but the, the larger question of the clash between how I put it is the clash between Pakistan's most popular politician and its most powerful institution. So that is sort of that, you know, that that is the first question. If someone is willing to take on uh, the institution head on the way Imran Khan has seems to have been, what are the implications for stability in Pakistan? So that is one question that I think we have to be able to sort of, you know, um, um, discuss and a, a lot of you know uh, PTI people I interact with on Twitter and so on. Um, they don't want to have that particular discussion, or they don't sort of. So I think that's one one, one element. Um, the second element is that in my read, um, I don't think he was a particularly successful prime minister. Now you could argue that uh, PDM has done a worse job than him, and I think that's a fair argument to make. That you know, in terms of the economy and so on, things have gone uh, dramatically south since last April. But when he was in power uh, for those three and a half years, I did not really see him do anything of, you know, dramatically consequential in terms of turning around Pakistan's economy or the or its economic prospects. Uh, he had a successful visit to the U.S., which I uh, wrote about wrote about in the journal. So there was, you know, it's not like there were no foreign policy wins. Um, there were some foreign policy wins. Uh, I certainly can see why many Pakistanis appreciate the fact that he conducted himself on the world stage with a certain amount of uh, dignity and self-confidence, right? This is not a guy who was grabbing on to Sarah Palin's hand and not letting go. So, I mean, so, I mean, I'll give him, I'll give him, I'll give him points for all of them. You remember that? Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe oh you actually I'll, remember I'll, that. I'll, oh, it's a, it's, well it's, well it's, done. Well Im done. Immortal moment. I'm sure, I'm sure Sarah Palin remembers it also. But, uh, um, but, you know, I don't think he had a particularly successful foreign policy. He managed to alienate the Saudis. He managed to alienate the UAE, right? I mean, if you talk to people in New Delhi, they were like thrilled. Because mm -hmm. like, how did this guy manage to take two of uh, Pakistan's most 
stalwart friends and kind of like you know through through his actions alienate them uh by and large the relationship with the us was not that great despite his sort of successful visit and again let's not apportion blame over here but again there was a sort of the, the relationship with india also headed south and so there were a lot of i would say that his record in of governance between uh, when before those three and a half years both in terms of economic policy and foreign policy to me was not impressive right i would have you know when he first took got into office he gave that great speech, right, where he talked about uh, basically human development in Pakistan, and, and he talked about infant mortality, and he talked about, you know, and, and that was a really moving speech. He because, showed that X-ray yeah, of, of that the, kid's, uh, of a baby's, of a newborn baby. I remember You could that. see that this guy really cared, and it was really heartening to see a leader of a South Asian country really want talk about development and talk about the betterment of his people with that kind of level of uh, sincerity. It was very obvious that he was being sincere. So I did have some hopes at that time after that speech that this guy, you know, he's going to uh, he's going to deliver and he's going to sort of move Pakistan in that direction towards more development. Uh, I didn't, you know, and you you follow this closely, so you can push back, Majad. But I did not. I I don't think he did a particularly good job. So those two things together. Well, I'll make a third point, which I made in my last column, and this is a deeper discussion, which is that. Does Imran stand for the status quo ideologically, or does he stand for reimagining Pakistan in a way that may be a little bit more practical and sustainable? And so I think he stands much more for the status quo. So, so those three things, right? One, the element of institutional instability that the head-on crash with the with the army creates. To his rather mediocre record in office. Three, that in my view, that he represents an ide ideology of continuity, when I would argue that Pakistan requires an ideology of change. Those three things together make me skeptical about his ability to do what many of his supporters would like him to do. But in terms of what his supporters would want, I mean, I understand that, right? I mean, I can understand the frustration with the other guys, I can understand the fact that he is a naturally sort of, he's an, in many ways a natural leader of men. I can see why people want to get behind him. I'm just skeptical. And I have to add that, that I'm generally skeptical of, of populists. Uh, I, I, I think that they come in with a certain amount of like charisma and appeal, but I think it becomes, it's very hard for them to deliver. And I don't, not only speaking about Pakistan, I kind of sort of, when I look around the world and I look at around, look at, look at other populists, I don't think they have a very good record of governance. But to that point, then, uh, if you think he's mediocre, uh, um, government-wise, record-wise, uh, that for the little time that he did have in office, and yet you qualify that with a comparison to the other guys. And the other guys have, of course, uh, it's a completely different story. The narrative arc there is completely different. Dynasts also rode in with the military support. Um, uh, lots of money, family money, very different story uh, to his. Um, isn't that crucial in a, in a, in a, in a two-party system which he crashes and makes literally through sheer will and a little bit of help from his friends, as the Beatles wrote, right? Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, through sheer will and, and GHQ support, uh, ends up breaking the two-party system, not since Zulfikar Ali Bhutto who broke the one-party system with sheer will and a little bit of help from his friends, who broke Ayub Khan's one-party system, has this happened? Also another populist. Now, we saw how, it, how Bhutto ended, not to you know put you in a, in, in a projection seat here. But he is relatively, from what I understand, that broad appeal isn't just the, 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 the sex appeal, which comes from this great story, but also that he's better than the other two choices. He's better than this rotten parliamentary, two-party system, this dynastic system, which has, frankly, eaten up Pakistan to its core. So how do you explain to the Pakistani voter, the young, urbane Pakistani voter uh, who's watching this right now, who's sitting in London or New York or, or, or Lahore uh, watching this, how do you explain to him that on the one hand, you like the Imran Khan story, but you are skeptical of Imran Khan 2.0 if he comes to power 
you don't think this guy has what it takes to really take Pakistan to the promised land. Because that's what I'm getting from you. I am a little confused. I mean, and I think this dilemma is, I mean, what you, what you put your finger on is really central to uh, my understanding of how Pakistanis have viewed politics from the start. And it's also not unique to Pakistan, right? I mean, we could have a similar conversation uh, about Argentina. Uh, you could have a similar conversation about Indonesia. And I think the, the issue is this. What happens in countries when they throw up leaders who are deeply flawed, but nonetheless popularly elected? So forget Imran Khan for a moment, right? Um, there's no question that uh, Nawaz Sharif was a deeply flawed leader. But Nawaz Sharif was also a popularly elected leader, right? He, he, he won that mandate fairly. Um, you could make the same case earlier in, for, for Ben Azir and so on. And I think the thing that, 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 that many educated urban middle class, these kinds of Pakistanis that you're talking about have struggled with is that, and this is a problem we have in, in most of the de developing world, which is that people want, uh, people thirst for, shall we call it, first world leadership. And they don't get it. And my own view is that it's a real dilemma but you've got to allow the political system a chance, right? You've got to accept that if you accept democracy, we accept that we're going to get ruled partly by people who are not the cleanest people, partly by people who are not always the most competent. And you let the system work out and you elect them and you kind of hope that they sort of are, they, they get better and, and better at it. We're not going to get, like in any of these countries, I think in the, in the developing world, we're not going to get that leader who has it all, right? We're not going to get the Lee Kuan Yew. We're not that. Most places are not that lucky, right? It's get funny, a guy, that's who he keeps bringing up Lee Kuan Yew. He, what, the guy who is like both personally clean and incorruptible, also hyper efficient, also really practical, and who is able to impose his will, right? There are a lot of people you have. You have many individual leaders, right? Not many, but some individual leaders who may themselves be clean. But Lee Kuan Yew was able to impose his will on the system. That everybody all the way down had to be clean too. I think it's very hard for us to. It's 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 unrealistic for us to uh, expect that in much of the world. And I can understand why Imran Khan is is and. But to answer your question, I'm 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 going all over the map a bit. But to answer your question more pointedly, I do take your point that if you um, on the question of corruption, for example, right? People have talked about this Tosha Khana stuff and all of that. Um or even this Al-Qadr business, right? And let's just say, I haven't studied the details of the Al-Qadr thing, but let's just say the allegations are true for the sake of argument. I still think if you're a Pakistani voter and you are indexing on corruption, you have to still say, this guy still seems a hell of a lot cleaner than anyone else, right? You've got to give him that. Sure. Um, but I think the on, on the other stuff, I'm not sure, right? So for example, I think that there is, you could you could make the case that Imran was not willing to reorient the Pakistani economy. In fact, he gave the army a blank check. I mean, that's the irony of the situation right now, right? Was he a guy who, as prime minister, was, was willing to say, for example, that, look, Bangladesh used to, have, used to be behind Pakistan for decades. Uh, per capita income in Bangladesh was behind Pakistan as recently as 1999. Today, per capita income in Bangladesh is about $2,500. It's about $1,500 in Pakistan. So pa Bangladesh, the average Bangladeshi is 60% richer than the average Pakistani. This would have been unimaginable to you. It would have been beyond unimaginable to your parents' generation, Majal. This is just, right? Um, I didn't see him grappling with this and saying, look, where did we go wrong at a fundamental level? How do we reorient Pakistan towards uh, improving the lives of its people? I, I didn't see that. Did I see a lot of that in the other guys? Fair point. No, I didn't see a lot of that in the other guys either. Um, but what I did not, what, but what, what Imran brings is a kind of messianic zeal um, whereas what I think uh, countries probably need more is nuts and, bolt, nuts and bolts governance. 
So and he doesn't. The other thing is that I don't think he has much of a team. Hmm. You know, uh, the the bench strength has been pretty weak in my view. So I guess that that's where I come down on that. So I agree. I agree with the deep bench, the lack of a deep bench, rather. I agree that uh, there was serious boo boos. This whole he got carried away with his own. He drank his own Kool Aid when it came to the same page uh, with the yeah. army, and the army eventually eats its own babies, and that's yeah. what they did to him. Um, this army has buried its own the teeth of its own chiefs <laughs> without an investigation. Yeah. It doesn't really care much for a, for you, Mr. Prime Minister, at that point, right? I'm referring to Zhao Lak yeah, yeah. and the unresolved uh, mystery of his death from 1988 for those who are interested in Pakistani politics and the deep state behind it. But, Sadanand, I mean, what you're also saying is, I feel like we just did a review of Imran Khan 1.0, okay. where we saw him. I want to keep on bringing us back to this current this current Maya, this moment. Now, in this moment, this moment has evolved. Yes, Imran Khan has admitted that he made mistakes. Uh, he's also claimed a few victories. If he were here, he'd say, oh, but Sadanand, I bought in the the uh, Sehat card, the health card. I sure. planted trees at a time when the country is one of the most uh, uh, you know, uh, affected in the world by global warming. You know, sure. as we saw last year, he would have come back and pushed back. Uh, sure. He would have given you how much the dollar was under his uh, uh, regime versus where it is now. He, if he were here, he would have probably come back and shot back at you with those numbers. So thus, I must speak on his behalf. Yeah. But in this particular moment, Sadana, we are faced with the. Um, he keeps calling it existential. I think it's a, it's a, it's it's clearly political. What you're, well, you're standing at a junction of more of the same, where the empire, the mighty Pakistani military, who which keeps on bearing its fangs at an average of eight or nine years. This is the longest stretch of continuing democracy that we've seen. We've now gone almost fourteen years without yeah. a direct military intervention. But this has all the trappings of a military government. Uh, you have abductions. You have uh, you have internet blackouts. You have illegal arrests. Um, you have uh, people barging into your home without uh, without a warrant and picking you up, and journalists disappearing, and 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 good people just gone. Um, they're behaving like a police state because they are not necessarily becoming one, but because they never really were not one. Uh, is my is my uh, larger base uh, argument, but. Khan seems to have finally challenged that. So coming back to this moment, if not him, who can change Pakistan's future? Because if he wins, if he loses this one, I don't see anyone of any caliber near. Uh, uh, I don't see anyone of any caliber nearing this moment of uh, uh, eyeball to eyeball confrontation with the status quo that is, i.e., the military. Agreed. But I have a two-part sort of response to that. And one part is actually a question for you, right? Which is that, let's just say he does come back, right? And he comes back after having confronted the military and the chief in the more, most direct way, I would argue, in Pakistani history, right? And it's kind of ironic, right? Because the, 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 same, the, the same liberals who used to argue that, well, the army is the biggest problem are also the same guys who don't like Imran Khan, right? It's kind of funny. There's an irony there. But let's just say he comes back, right? Um, I think the best, probably the best scenario for Pakistan in general is stability and the army doing its job. It's unrealistic to expect, you know, Pakistan does have genuine security concerns. Sort of, you know, you, you can't, the army can't turn itself into an NGO. It needs a strong army. But an army that is much more focused on its core functions, it should have a, it'll have a role in national security. But that's its core function. And it allows day-to-day -day politics and governance to continue without oversight. And it also allows with the elected government to make fundamental calls, such as what is the size of the military budget, right? That is, the, I, my, my view, that is the ideal situation for Pakistan. And if that happens, then there's no reason why Pakistan cannot look more like other Asian countries, both South Asian and Southeast Asian where broadly speaking, the governments are able to deliver at least incremental you know, increases in, in, in well-being, living standards, uh, human development, per capita income, and so on. 
there's no reason why, right, that Pakistan couldn't be doing exactly what India has done over the past several years or Bangladesh has done. It should be broadly in that category or Sri Lanka or any of the other South Asian countries. That's ideal. The first part of my, my, my is, a, is a question back to you, which is that can Pakistan do that? It can do that without a military that is sitting on everybody's head, yes. But can it do that without a military that remains there with, with a certain amount of institutional integrity and has Imran Khan's frontal assault on the military threaten that institutional integrity? So that's one question. I say this obviously as not a, someone... I'm not coming to this as a fan of the Pakistani military, right? I'm just coming to this as an analyst and saying that, well, I spent some time in Indonesia. I used to be an Indonesia correspondent. Um, the military was central after, you know, Suharto came to power in a coup in 1966 and he ruled until 1998. But after 1998, when the military stepped back, it stepped back and it gave more room to the civilians, but it remained a strong, coherent organization. It's not as though the persons who, you know, people who came after said that got into a huge sort of confrontation and sort of made it very personal and said that you know this officer has to go and this guy you know it's so that's that's the first part um so that's not that's not clear to me right if that if 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 if, if how much stability pakistan will have without a military so the question is like goldilocks right has it gone from like too hot to too cold or do you need something that's in the middle right and to his credit, Khan does talk about that. He says that, you know, I don't have anything against the army. I have a problem with the chief. But the problem there, as you know better than most anyone, is that one of the strengths of the Pakistani army has been chain of command. I mean, this is a remarkably disciplined institution. And again, you don't have to be a fan of the institution to say it. To say it. Pakistan has a more disciplined army, historically speaking, than many, many. I mean, there's been no colonel, colonel school in Pakistan. There have been colonel schools in Greece, in Portugal. Latin America is littered with this, right? Read the novels of Gabriel Garcia Marquez. How many colonel, Pakistani colonels have we even heard of? So the question is that they sort of, you, you, you need that institutional stability at one hand, on the one hand, but you want them to step back from governance. I feel that Imran Khan, has his pendulum has swung really wildly. So like three years ago or two years ago, this was a guy who was not pushing back at all, right? The one page was, you know, you do, you do your own thing. And he has swung from that to really taking on the army chief, taking on serving generals in a very personalized way. And I think that that midpoint is something that, 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 that he has missed. Um, and that's what I think is the sort of, you know, that to me is the fundamental impediment for him, um, at least in the near term. If in an ideal world, he could come back in a way that was more measured, more responsible, uh, then I take your point. Um, but I don't see evidence of that right now. I see him as someone having swung from one extreme to the other. I buy that. And I think to your point, um, I would say... Uh, that yes, the pendulum has swung wildly, and uh, the psychological profiling of 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 his of his uh, uh, of his current campaign um, indicates that perhaps it is his 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 ego which has been hurt has finally like you know taken over, and he was like, how dare you? How dare you do this to me? Ab main tumhe dikhaunga, you know, and and he is. No, but, you know, but you know, to be fair, I mean, the other side, the other side, I mean, the PTI, a PTI guy could argue that look, there's no neat, clean, unmessy way to do this. And if you want to tame the army, and if you want civilian supremacy, you sitting in Washington, meaning me, may want it in this textbook sort of calm way. But the reality in Pakistan is that if you really want it, this is how you're going to get it. So I think there's a fair, there's a strong argument on the other side too. I'll acknowledge that. But but I would still say um, that Pakistan stands at a moment where Khan, despite the allegations of narcissism, same pagedness, U turns, um, the um, tendencies to slip into Islamism, which is a very dangerous one considering the the, the part of the world that he he wants to rule. Um, all of that aside, and of course his track record, which I would I would I would partially agree with you on. Still, I would say that the moment the decision 
that he's making Pakistanis, uh, he's forcing Pakistanis to make is a crucial one. Hit the streets um, and take on uh, this beast, this animal, uh, that is the military, the establishment, etc. Um, or just, you know, keep on, as Bob Dylan said, keeping on. You know, just, uh, just, just deal with it. And if they do rid of him, one way or the other, and p the Pakistanis have uh, creative ways of getting rid of uh, uh, people they don't like, um, in ways they come back and in ways they don't come back. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. But um, if it's not Khan this time, Sadanand, uh, then whom? That's what I leave you with. What is this? Is that's why I sort of uh, when people use heavy words like existential, I don't buy it. Think it, you know, usually like just it's it's best to use that stuff in like in in poetry, etc. But this is looking sort of like a moment where at least generationally, I don't see a leader, a man, woman, whoever else coming in and taking on the mighty military till this till this extent. I feel like that this may be uh, one of those innings where. Uh, a smaller player like Khan takes on this 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 gargantuan beast, um, which in a way makes me sort of as a Democrat um, empathetic. I don't know how you feel about that, but for me I this is a moment fair, which cannot be lost. It's a fair point, right? Um, and I, I and it's a point that I made in my most recent column where I sort of made some of these uh, comparisons on human development and uh, economic indicators with Bangladesh. Look, I mean, I think the the question is. It, the question, the way I phrase, phrase, frame it, is not if not Khan, who, but it's like we don't know who, but we do know the qualities that that person will need to have or the thinking that that person will need to have. And it may actually be a military figure. Uh, it may be a civilian we haven't heard of who comes up and fills a vacuum over the next two, four, five, ten years. Maybe not, no one's on the horizon today. It could be a figure who comes up in politics. It could be a person in the military. But I think that the basic ingredients, as I see it, would be one, the professionalization of the army and getting it out of the active management of politics back in the barracks. Let it do its job, protect the borders, all of that perfectly fine. All countries need that. Pakistan needs it too. But get out of this sort of this heavy handed business of running. That would be point number two moving Pakistan in the direction of a more of a development state. Um, there you kind of like, you can take a lesson. I think Bangladesh offers a great lesson, right? That you're going from nothing to having one of the world's largest uh, garment and textiles export businesses in the world. I mean, this mm -hmm. is, they're like right up there. Sure. Right? Um, this ability, and it's again, everything won't get transformed immediately, but even if you can focus on a two or three areas, generate employment, generate more industrialization, get more investment, um, and then have a foreign and and an economic of uh, outlook that is more sort of rooted on improving the lives of the people. Whereas I think in Imran Khan's case, there was a lot of kind of popular grandstanding, right? Like, lo, this guy Macron did this in France, or someone did something in the Netherlands, or I'm going to get together with Mahathir and Erdogan and set up a new channel. You know what I mean? And I can understand why that sort of hits a certain emotional register with people, but it strikes me as fundamentally impractical, right? Um, and I think a more sort of uh, lowercase practical approach, at least until Pakistan sort of, you know, gets into a groove and does better, I would argue, um, would just make much more, much more sense. So we know that sort of whoever it comes who wants to sort of turn this ship around, I would argue that's the most logical way to turn the ship around. Now you're saying that I don't see anyone who can turn that ship around in that way. I agree. But I would add to that and I don't see Khan doing it either. Right, right. On that happy note, Sadaran Dhume, thank you. Of course, I must reintroduce you. Uh, you are at... Uh, uh, Dume, that's at D H U M E on uh, Twitter. You are, of course, at the Wall Street Journal, where your work can be followed up. You're based, of course, uh, in uh, in Washington D.C. But I must also uh, tell everyone, our viewers, that we went to the same school, though at different times. We're both Columbia grads. You were there in the '90s. I came much later. Columbia we J School, yes. 
which makes you way cooler, way cooler than me because you were there <laughs> in the good old days. I now, now that they let everyone in, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, not in your days. Uh, Sadaran, I hope uh, I bump into you again in the circuit on the circuit when I'm in DC. But um, I, I last word to you um, in the moment that we, again in this particular moment uh, it is the 19th of May. It's a Friday. Khan is holed up at Zaman Park. The latest, as we know it, is Khan is holed up at Zaman Park. Investigations are underway against many of his party members. Uh, the army is struck back. I keep on saying that. I love Star Wars references, but there's no other way to put it. The empire has struck back. Uh, the PTI leaders, workers, may be tried under the Army Act in military courts. Elections are nowhere in sight. The Supreme Court has given, and the other courts have given Khan reprieve, but it's only for a couple of weeks. Where do you see this moment versus the next one that's coming up? As we start this, is little, this is a little bit circular because I get so much of my analysis and information from watching your show every day. So, <laughs> so, so now you're like, you're like, you're like now asking me to tell you what I bhai, saw on your Washington show. Bhai, Washington, bhai, Washington, bhai, 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 some of what you said actually just earlier today um, strikes me watching from a distance with the usual caveats as as fundamentally true. Uh, he seems to be on the back foot in a way that he was not on the back foot even when he was arrested. He was not on the back foot when he was released. He was not on the back foot for. Uh, I think that you know in his body language, in his in in his speeches, uh, this this seems to be a sort of you know if you use a cricket analogy. There's a this this is a guy who would you know have that fight till the end. We've all seen that, right? But then when you're in the 48th over and you're eight down and you still have like 60 runs to get, even the most spirited guy kind of can see the writing on the wall, and that's the vibe he's been giving the last few days. Now we don't know what's gonna what it's gonna mm -hmm. be like. You know, that's a great do. one. Yeah. I can see that. Right? So we don't know where it's going to be in a week or two. I'm not sort of looking into crystal ball, but I'm saying for now, uh, it, 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 it doesn't look good for him. Let's just leave it at that. Sadhana Dhume, thank you. Jeete rahe. Thank you. And agla wala mein, mein inshallah apke saath urdu hindi mein karunga. Bilkul, bilkul. Shukriya ji. Thank All you. All right. Okay, take care. You too. Bye.